Dark Cast Network. The light shines brightest on our indie podcasts. ready in 10 days <laughs> and i'm i'm patient i'm gonna wait and i'm gonna smoke the shit out of it <laughs> <laughs> all right then <laughs> ah, yes then i'm gonna smoke the shit out of it okay oh, yeah it is like a true labor all right smoke it it's a true labor of love. I see why people, like, use their maximum yield and space, like, when they do a, a grow. I only want the best of the best, and, you know, I only fuck with feminized seed, or I only get clones. I understand why what now. clones? Clones is, like, if I get a, a female, like, what I could have done with this plant that I have, I should have, like, cut off a piece and propagated it. Cloned it. And made, oh, okay. a, made a sister, make a sister, a twin. Okay. And then I would have had two plants. Right. So, so that, that's the one that was in downstairs in the... Yeah. And so that is that all of it or did you... That's all of it. That's it. So I cut back some of the fan leaves. It was fluffier, uh-huh. but it's drying out. Okay. So, but yeah, that's it. Uh, okay. So that's the whole plant. That's... <laughs> Because <laughs> I feel like that plant was like this. It was enormous. It, no, you're totally right. That's the whole plant. Oh, okay. Because, I mean, at the, all I'm getting is, like, the nugs that grew on it, like, the quote-unquote flower. Right. And watching that grow was crazy. Like, I've never, I never really knew, like, all of the the mechanics and the process and the waiting and just watching it go through different stages of life and... Mm growth and shit it's fuck it's exhausting so i'm gonna smoke the shit out of it when it's ready <laughs> all right well go ahead and do that oh my gosh so what's going on brandy how are you thanks for coming over um i am fine i have so many things to do and i'm probably not going to do any of them because i get overwhelmed and so i don't do anything okay what you got to do Okay, so we have to pack because we have to we have to move. We still don't have a place to move to, but we have to pack up. So they give you a date? No, they haven't done that. But um, you know, they're gonna. I don't want to be like they're gonna be like, oh, you need to move on this date, and then I'm still like, shit, I, I have to pack stuff. So I'm gonna start, you know, putting shit in boxes, labeling the boxes. I think I'm gonna get a storage unit because I don't want to have just a bunch of fucking boxes all over the place. Um, we need to start throwing stuff away. I want to have a yard sale, but I have to see what we actually have to sell before I decide. You got to go through your shit. Yeah. And um, then I, you know, I want to crochet some things. I haven't crocheted anything in a while, like in a couple of months. Did you get your mobility back in your hand? You don't have the crochet claw anymore? My hand is still like, I guess it's arthritis. Because um, I get hand cramps. Okay. Like, well, it's a, I get a hand cramp in this hand. I get a hand cramp. Okay. The muscle right here, like, locks up and shit, and it's like, fuck you. And so I'm like, okay, well, that sucks. Um, and I want to make another batch of crochet hooks because the batch that I made it was for me. So now I want to make, you know, uh, some to put on Etsy. Um, NaNoWriMo season is coming again. I just reapplied to be the municipal liaison for this area. Um, and so I'm going to create a new, we have a Discord server, but I don't have the controls to it. The, um, the former, the previous ML does. And so I'm just going to create a new one because I don't really like the way that one's set up anyway. And... Then I have this game that I'm playing that I'm obsessed with, and I just made our Discord server for that. <laughs> and so I'm trying to get everybody to get on Discord. We've got five members on there right now, and we have an event happening tomorrow morning. And What's it for? This game? The game, yeah. It's a, um, an alliance event where we go against another alliance, you know, for points and shit. And everybody's not on Discord, so I can't, like, you know, communicate effectively you're a nerd. So, <laughs> anyway, 
And so it's just a bunch of shit to do. And uh, like, I'm like, oh, I have to do all this stuff. And then, so what's going to end up happening, what usually ends up happening is that I'm like, ah, I get like, um, what is that? Overwhelmed, anxious. Yeah. What, what is that thing where like you just get, um, you become like catatonic and you're just like, uh, oh God. <laughs> So that's what's going to happen. Let's not let uh, that happen. Um, yeah, so. And then I want to, I have to, so the way our house faces, the wind blows all the shit to my, to our, into our yard. And so there's all this trash um, on the gate, the, the gate, you know, next to the, the trailer. So I have to clean that shit up because nobody else is going to fucking do it. It's annoying. <sighs> so I have, that'll probably be something I do this weekend. Maybe I'll get up early and just do that. I do something every day in my backyard. Shit I don't want to do, but this I'll be out in there. the front yard. But oh, in the front yard, too. I finally got all those pumpkins off my porch. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't, like, labor-intensive. I had to cut the pumpkin and bake it. Now I'm making pumpkin puree. Yeah, but that's not what you said. That's true. And then I... <laughs> <laughs> that's not what we were talking about. I know, I know, I know, I know, but... Just get it done. It'll make you feel good once it's cleaned up. Yeah. And then um, I'm pretty sure there's like snakes and shit mm. back there. So mm-mm, like... mm-mm. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. You're one of those people that thinks snakes are gross or something. Um, Serpents? <laughs> Serpents. <A> serpent. <laughs> uh, but what do you what, what, What's going Spending on? all my what's time doing? laying these eggs for a serpent like you to come and eat them. Something like that. A seven. <laughs> what is going on with you this week? I am hustling, dog biscuits. Oh, we're doing hustling. Hustling, hustling, hustling. So I have an event coming up on Monday at Roseman Health and Fitness. I'm doing a pop-up from 4.45 to 6.45-ish. Monday. Two hours. Two hours, Monday evening. Chris is like, you can stay for as long as you want. But um, I'm doing a pop-up so we can kind of... Meet some new customers, give them some yummy dog biscuits, answer questions. That's fun. May 16th. I was wondering if it was going to be windy, but you never fucking know. I'm going to be inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm inside the gym. So um, if you are in Rosemond or near on Monday, come to Rosemond Health and Fitness and come see me and get some dog biscuits. Yeah. So that's pretty much what I'm doing um, this week. I am trying to find, I'm trying to like streamline my uh, real estate business. Streamline in what way? I don't know. Just like continuously have like inquiries coming in. I'm not doing anything. I'm not paying for anything right now. I'm not doing anything because I don't have any money for all that. So that could be the issue. Um, But I definitely want to sell a house. Or two. Did you make posts on the, the socials? I do that. I do social media posts. I did a reel yesterday. It was pretty cool. But, you know, it's it's a grind. Any business that you have to get into, you kind of, like, people jump all in. Me, I like to dab my toe in and work my way in slow, like I do in a pool. Yeah. So, um, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. You're in California. You want to buy or sell a house? Holler. <laughs> Holler. Holler. Anyway. Um, did I tell you that chick that um, that Norman, that we are working with, she's licensed in Utah, here, and I want to say, like, Texas or something. Oh, that's crazy. I'm like, well, you, like, how are you, well, I guess, you know, there's ways where you can, like, you know, have somebody, I guess, show a property for you or whatever. She, maybe she has a team. Um, yeah, she works, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I still haven't even, like, talked to her myself. Well, <laughs> so, I have my own things IDK. to say about that, but whatever. I decay. Good luck with that. Um, I'm Sunny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Flea. And this is Book of Lies, the podcast. It's Bolt Bitches. Yes. Hello, listeners. How y'all doing? Thank you for joining us. If you aren't already, you can go ahead and connect with us on social. 
You can meet us on Twitter at Book of Lies Pod, on Instagram or Facebook at Book of Lies Podcast, at Book of Lies Podcast. We have a website, Book of Lies Podcast.com. Hello, patrons. Can we give a special how you doing over to Wisconsin to our patron, Amy? Amy, we got your package. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Brandy ate her cow pie. I did. It was good. I didn't get to eat mine yet. I'm waiting. I was going to eat it on the podcast, but y'all don't want to hear me smacking. No. And it was big and delicious. It was It was really good. I was like, ooh. Like, because you know how when you, like, because it's like a gigantic turtle. Yeah. So, you know how when you eat turtles, you're like, I want more. Like, I wish there was more, but they're gone. This yeah. one was like, it lasted a while. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> that hit the spot. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, I haven't eaten mine yet. I'm looking forward to devouring that. And thank you so much. I got this cute little cheese spreader. That's going to be on my charcuterie board. Oh, yeah. My charcucci board. You know, haven't you seen the, it's not a meme, charcucci? No. Charcuterie. But um, that's definitely going on the board, baby. So that just thank reminds you. me of Karuchi, so. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. We also have Patreon, guys. So if you aren't already or if you've got it and you want to join us, meet us on Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Book of Lies podcast. We offer you early and commercial free episodes. We give you special love and adoration on the podcast, obviously. A big shout out when you join us. We've got different tiers. You get stickers, swag. This year we're giving out bulb socks for certain tiers. And um, some other special things that we might send you as well. Blop socks. You get an automatic pen pal because I love writing to our patrons. So um, join us. We'd love to have you. Brandy, are you caught up on the Housewives yet? Have you been watching any of the reunions? I, okay. I watched, like, and by watched, I mean it was on. <laughs> um, the it New Jersey, um, the, I think it was the first one. The first episode. The first, yeah, the mm-hmm. reunion part one. Yep. Seriously, Teresa is becoming you. more and more unlikable. And Thank I you. can't, I just can't. She's ridiculous. She's, She's I, I'm ridiculous. When I was, actually, when I was watching, I was like, there should be a rule about the housewives from now on. Mm. You get five years. And that's it. Get out of here. That shit gets on your... That goes to their fucking heads and they start acting a goddamn fool. Oui. Every Like, it seems like every housewife that's... Except for, like, except for Candy, I think she's the only one who hasn't, like, got a big head about being on the housewives. But, like, fucking Ramona, that Nene, uh, what's her name? Um, Vicky. All those people, they fucking, like, they just started getting too big for their fucking I don't think budget. The only one that's holding it down um, is, I'm going to say Kyle. In Beverly Hills, she's mm. been on there. Yeah. Um, she do get catty with bitches, but she keeps it, like, 100. Like, I, I'm a bitch, but she doesn't be like, I'm better than all of you bitches. Right. And, like, I she doesn't do shit. stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. she doesn't do shit that makes you, like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, that's what it does. Like, the way Nanny started, like, acting, behaving toward the other women mm-hmm. and running her mouth, saying awful, disgusting things mm-hmm. to the end, like, with no consequences. And then... Same with Vicky. She thought she was, you know, this is my show. My mm-hmm. show. I started this show. My show. And as soon as the words my show comes out of their mouth, they need to be off. Off. Uh, period. Look at eh, You said it. Ramona Get out of here. said it. She needs to be gone. This is this is my my franchise, right? This is my this, franchise. Who said that? That's what um Paul Walker said. <laughs> Paul, but Oh, yeah, Paul, Paul Walker said? But he was joking. That was, was yeah, it was that, that, that skit that thing. they did. I miss Paul Walker. I know. Like, oh, R.I.P., brother. Yeah. You were a good-looking man. But as far as the housewives goes, yeah, like, five years. If you got, if you if you start getting out of pocket, which Teresa is, I hate to say it, but it's true. And I really used to like her, but now I can't fucking stand her. Like, she just, she's an asshole. She's she does shit. She's an asshole. She's like, she, t- um, what's, what's her sister's name? Um, Melissa? Melissa. Tell her to shut the fuck up. You need to ch- like she thinks that Melissa's her goon and whatever M- Teresa says Melissa's supposed to fall in line and like be her her right hand of vengeance. You know what I'm saying? But Teresa doesn't do the same. Like she doesn't do the same for her. Like you she said, when have you had her back? Shit from me, but you refuse to return the fucking favor. Or fuck whatever. off! Like fuck off! Back up your fucking words. Be be the change you want to see. Mm-hmm. No fucking you know talk. If you're gonna talk to talk, you gotta walk it. So. Don't fucking tell me to do something, but you won't do the same for me. Mm-hmm. 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 And that's how she is. And then she fucking, uh, we're not close. We're not close. Okay, so now we're not close because why? 
you I just I just I can't she like she her, it's her her perception it seems to be like the only perception and she misconstrues things and like acts like that's exactly what happened or like what she, the way she believes it happened is what happened when it's not if you're on the outside looking in you can see exactly what people are talking about and she can't see it you know what I mean mm-hmm. it's just really stupid it's like she's She's like she just lives in her own world. Yep. She lives in the Teresa world and everybody else is just a visitor. <sighs> she's a mess. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, she's a fucking mess. Yes. And um, And this Louie nonsense. Ugh, whatever. That's the thing. Louie, you can't say shit about Louie. Like, he's a person, he's a public person, and I'm gonna say what the fuck I wanna say about him. Like <laughs> I'm saying what, she what is out there. fight with everybody. If you had something to say about Louis that wasn't, oh my God, I want to suck his dick too. <laughs> you know? <laughs> She's pissed. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but, I mean, remember how she was about Joe? And then, like, ugh, so stupid. Mm-hmm. So like she's stupid. blind. She's and then Gia is like, oh, well, ugh. I used to. Well, Gia is a mess, but Gia is her daughter, her mother's daughter. But Gia has a little more common sense right. than Teresa does. A little more. And the fact that she was mad at her uncle over the over, you know, what he said, comments that he made about Joe. Whatever. That's your uncle. Okay. You, I'm tired of you disrespecting us. No, he didn't disrespect you. He told the truth about your dad, yep. and you're upset about the truth. Yep. Like sh- we all know it already. Yep. We know what he did. We know what happened. Don't be mad because he's he you know is saying it. That's like people. Oh well, you know you're black. I and how dare you? How <laughs> how dare you? How dare you say I'm black? <sighs> but you're black. What I. I'm gonna You're flip this fucking table. Disrespecting me. What the hell are you talking about? Like, I'm it's gonna insane. flip this table. You're black and your whole family's like, what? <laughs> like, it's stupid. So dumb. This is news to me, Brandy. Like, <laughs> you can't deny the facts here. Come on. That's like, <laughs> never mind, I'm not going there, but. So, I think we should get on to the nitty gritty. Yeah, what um, are we talking about today? Today. We are going to talk about William Henry Cosby Jr. Oh, God. Motherfucking Bill Cosby. (sighs) And we're drinking because we need to (laughs) for this episode. Oh, man. So get with it. Bill Cosby was born July 12th, 1937 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. PA. Came up as a stand-up comedian. First of all, I know, you know, a while ago, you watched We Need to Talk About Cosby. Mm, You were like, Sonny, have you watched it? I was like, no, not ready to do it. I recently added Showtime to my Hulu package. Oh, okay, yeah, that's where I was. Holler at you, Hulu. Let's talk. Let's talk. Give us a promo code. (laughs) We'll bring the folks. The milkshake will bring all the boys to the yard, okay? (laughs) So... Um, I got Showtime. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, I need to sit down and watch this shit. Yeah. I hope and we had like several glasses of wine and maybe some some edibles. <laughs> you know what? Let's talk about edibles really quick. So this uh, look at all my all of my dealers are ladies. So they <laughs> like to bake. This girl gave me, she was like starting her edible business. So she gave me a big package of like chocolates. Did I give you one? I don't think no, I did. No. She gave me some chocolates. And they've been sitting in my freezer. I would eat one, and I was just like, this doesn't really hit me like I'd like to be hit. You, didn't you say you ate a bunch? Like, you ate one, and then, like, later yes. you ate another one? Hey, and- yeah, I, I've done that too many times. It's so stupid. <laughs> but what I did this time, I was just like, it was after a long fucking day. Actually, it was, like, last Saturday. And um, I well, ate. After that event? Yeah. Okay. I ate two chocolates. And... It started to hit me, right? I was like, oh, here we go. And the fucking thing I don't like about edibles is, like, you be high all fucking night long. Like, <laughs> if you eat a chocolate at, like, 3 or go 4. Go to sleep. <laughs> you eat a chocolate at 3 or 4. P.M. P.M. You are what I had. I was high until, like, midnight. Like, <laughs> I, um, like, you know, I was doing my thing. I was cool. I was chilling. I was, like, you know, managing. My child was, like, having a mental breakdown, like, crying, screaming in my face. And I was just like. Why are you crying? 
<laughs> just, just like you're not phasing me right now. This like, isn't. Uh, yeah. Why are you? Doing what, what's the deal? She just sat there and cried until she stopped crying, and I was just like, okay, are we good now? And she was fine. And I was like, damn, I'm so happy I ate these edibles <laughs> because this girl is crazy sometimes. Anyway, but towards like eight or nine o'clock, I was like, I need to go to sleep. I was just like, I was out. And then something woke me up. Like Jamal finally made it home because it was when he had um, a track the track playoffs or whatever. He was gone all damn night. I like cooked dinner and shit. And I was like, well, fuck you. But I woke up and I was like, <laughs> well, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. I woke up and I was still high. I was like, damn it. <laughs> uh, but I don't like edibles like that. I really don't. I did eat another time. Another girl, another one of my girls, she gave me a slice of cake. It was like some type of like, she, I think she called it like cinnamon, cinnamon toast cake. It was a cake. And it was a, a slice of the cake. So I was like, I'm going to eat this. You ate the whole cake? I ate the, it was I a, mean the whole slice. It was a slice. But yeah, I was just like, fuck it. Oh, <laughs> dude. I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Because this girl, like she, like, I think her aunt is like a grower or something. And like, she's heavily into like the cannabis. So she makes her shit like hella strong. Potent. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that chick that's like, I love being high. <laughs> That's not me. Like, I just like to be, like, a little head change and chill. I don't like to feel like my body has taken over me. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't fucking like that. <laughs> it would be too intense. But my tolerance is, like, if I don't eat enough, I don't feel it. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you because, like, I a little bit and I'm, like, stone and I'm, like... <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna watch TV now. And then just like it like weed has an opposite effect on me in certain <laughs> situations. Like this like the indica, the stuff that's supposed to slow you down or couch sit you, it just still gives me energy. Like I just have lots of energy. But um which is fine. I clean the house, I get things done, and whatever. I survived. Anyway, um <laughs> I watched this fucking documentary. It took me a few days to watch it because I was just like this motherfucker. I watched it straight through. You're you're a brave one, because I was like, what? Like I wanted to I wanted to see what the to- the total tally was of women, and yeah, I wanted to hear their stories. Okay, uh, be a child, <laughs> child, be a mouse. She needs to be a mouse. Oh God, <laughs> yep, sure do. <laughs> Get me the fuck out of here. Um, I don't remember what we were saying. Bill Cosby is a piece of shit. And yeah. we watched the documentary, and we do need to talk about it because um, I've never felt so angry and betrayed. There it is. Yep. And just really disappointed mm-hmm. in an individual who I don't fucking know, who I don't feel like, you know, has changed my life or made me like. Nothing like I don't feel. Oh my gosh! You know, like, like yeah, I watched the Cosby Show. Yeah, I was born in eighty two. The Cosby Show came out in what like eighty eighty four or something like that. I think it came out eighty four. Eighty. Like it started in eighty four, maybe. Yeah, it started in eighty four, and um, I was gonna say eighty seven, but I was seven watching it. I remember it came on to like what ninety fucking. It was on ninety six or something. Really long time. Let me give you the stats it was for eight years. It was a, he. Oh, let's fucking get into it. Okay, so you know who he is, Bill Cosby, born in Philadelphia, PA. Um, grew up in Philly, I guess. He went to college, but then he dropped out of college to become a stand-up comedian, right? Mm-hmm. And so I par- apparently like before he would just like do like comedy and like might talk about controversial things, but tried to keep like that squeaky clean he, type situation. He didn't want to talk about dramatics or he in order to appeal to white people at the time, he had to not talk about black issues. There it is. Yeah, black issues. Social injustice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Things of that nature. So he kept it clean. He did clean comedy. Quote unquote clean comedy. He didn't use swear words. 
And he talked about like random ass bullshit, like, oh, you know, I got a call on the phone and it was the wrong number and blah, blah, you know, like, I don't even know what the fuck he, he was saying in the standards, but basically shit that they could relate to. Shit that they could relate to. Yes. Okay. Because, you know, everybody was so fucking sensitive, especially, you know, white fragility was high back then. And, you know, don't talk about black folks unless you're saying bad things about them. Then you can, you know, can talk about them, but... As a black person, he couldn't really... Well, I guess... You know what? There's there's still fucking Candace Owenses out there that do it, so whatever. But um, uh, he, you know, Uncle Ruckus... Yeah. <laughs> he, he wasn't being Uncle Ruckus. He was just, you know, staying was, off those topics. He just wasn't talking about who he was. He was just talking about anything except, like, racial right. stuff or cursing. Yeah. Like, his stand-up comedian. It would involve going to the grocery store or, like... Basic stuff. Yeah, shit that they can relate to. Yeah, know? yeah. So, um, he was doing, okay, gigging around the stand-up community. And in the early 60s, 1963, he got a spot on The Tonight Show where he did it. Ed Sullivan Show. Ed Sullivan, but it was still The Tonight Show. Mm. Ed Sullivan was The Tonight Show, I think. No. No? The Tonight Show was Johnny Carson. Okay, what Brandy said. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So we watched, like I said, um, we need to talk about Cosby. Um, let me just tell you who directed that. Uh, what was his name? Camus Bell? Camus w. Bell? W. Kamal Bell. W. Kamal Bell. Um, that was his documentary. It came out in January? Really? Yeah. Wow, damn. Really? Because I, I watched like it, it like last like year. February. Really? I feel like it was what out was longer than there. No. Because that's when he was released, right? When he got released, right? Then this came out. Yeah. Well, when they were making it is when he got released. Oh, and this is, what is this, May of 2022? Fuck, it's almost 2023, dude. Like, <laughs> uh, 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 Another is- dumpster fire year <laughs> flying by. Woo-hoo. Flying by with us. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so he gets on The Tonight Show, Ed Sullivan Show, and um, he's a hit. He does his clean stand-up. And then people are like, hey... He's black. He's safe. We trust him. Right. Um, let's see where this career goes. And I feel like the second like he got on the scene, he just kind of took off. Like his star just continued to rise and really didn't fall. Right. Until the fuckery. Uh, and not even until the fuckery. Until somebody somebody publicly called it out. That's what I thought was funny, was that, like, people have been accusing this man for years, but it took another stand-up comedian mm-hmm. to say, go on YouTube, and, and there's a bunch of videos about this guy. They said, and, Google Bill Cosby rape, and he was like, more things come up than Hannibal Burris, because it was yeah. Hannibal Burris yeah. who brought um, light to the fact that this fool is a rapist. <laughs> Let's sh- that's who he is. Anyway, he gets... I on- hate the fact that people were like, well, he was never convicted. Fuck you. <laughs> he did this to me. He is this thing. This is what he right. is. What are we talking Period. about Period. I didn't say convicted rapist. I said rapist. <laughs> but he's convicted now. So anyway. In the court of opinion. Well, yeah. No, mm. he, it's j- a, it, it, jail time. It's weird. Yeah. So he gets on a show in the 1960s called I Spy in 1965. And I guess that's like when he like blew up. People were like, hey, I didn't know he, I didn't know any of this stuff about this man. I didn't know, like, I was just like, He's on the Cosby Show. Woo! I don't remember Jello. That's what I knew. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I about remember movies his... with him and Richard Pryor. Right. I remember Ghost Dad. Put yeah, the bitch no. on the phone. Yeah, but that shit was hilarious. That was long ago. That was the eighties. I don't remember any. I don't know. You know. You know what? I think I black stuff out. <laughs> um, well, you, there's movies that you probably saw when you were a kid. You don't fucking remember. True. Because there was a movie with him and Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. That I remember. I don't remember what it was called, but I just remember them two in it. Yeah, they produced it. It was like, uh, he produced it. Um, I did, like, they did talk about it, but we're not going to go over his filmography. He's been around a long fucking time. And, and he's out- been famous a long time. He's been oh. famous for like, what, 60s? So, 100 years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for at least 60 years. <laughs> at least 60 years. But the thing is, when he came up, this is, this is, a rapist is a rapist is a rapist. <laughs> okay. You can't turn a person into a rapist. So, back in the 60s. You can't turn a person. They treated women like shit. 
in Hollywood. They still do. They still do. Yeah. But still. it was accepted. Women didn't really have rights. Who cares what she they said? They didn't have a voice. We didn't have voices and people weren't listening. So... Yeah, it was he like, was, shut the fuck up or you won't get any roles. Or he you won't get was any, any, doing anything. this on I Spy. Like, in the 60s, this is when the allegations start coming up. Because then he was doing all that comedy about Spanish Fly. Yeah, which is really, really weird. The Spanish You're Fly situation. basically telling rape jokes. Yes. Yes, um, yes, you are. And not only are you telling rape jokes, you're telling people that you want to be the rapist in the rape joke. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's weird. I just put a little Spanish fly in the drink and get and it, it all, all, <laughs> all loosey goosey. Yeah, he's weird. That's weird. Like, <sighs> don't, how about don't drug me? How about that? I feel like a stand-up comedian confessing his sins in his stand-up comedy is one thing. Like, oh, you know, one, when I was a kid, I started a fire type of thing. But when you're young, saying... He's young at this time when all these records are recorded. So all his comedy was on record. So he's just saying whatever he wants. It's like no, us no. in the beginning. We would say all kinds of things on the podcast. Now they're rich and famous. <laughs> yeah, right. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke. But he would <laughs> say anything. Like, he maybe wasn't thinking... Who would hear this? Or a hundred years later, he would be where I, he was? No, I think it was... a. Uh, uh, okay, so I think there's a multiple factors here. One factor is that it's comedy. Mm-hmm. I can say anything in my comedy. It's unjust, right? It's Yeah, like, it's a joke. It's a joke! <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I joke, I joke. I keep, Number I keep. two, he's making money so people aren't going to really question him like because he's feeding the, the machine. Right. So he's not really going to. Nobody's going to be like, well, you know, hey, do you really, you know, does that with really Spanish fly? Happen? Or hey, they might say, hey, does that really work? But they're not going to say, hey, are you actually doing this to chicks? Like, you know, they're not going to defend women. They might ask him for tips. Yeah. But they're not going to defend women because, again, they're women. So who cares? Right. Mm-hmm. And then another factor is that he probably just thinks that he's fucking untouchable. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what he thinks. And I mean, and it's early, but people like him, so mm-hmm. they like me. So I, you know, I could, I could sell them fucking sand in the desert, that kind of shit. Mm. So, before he was a stand-up, he was a bartender. Oh well, that's fucking great. I wonder if that's where he learned this shit. Tending, About Spanish flag? Tending bar, putting in bitches' drinks. <laughs> well, if they're gonna. <laughs> Bars are the place for men to be predators, Mm -hmm. out and out predators. That's why they tell women, don't leave your drink unattended. Don't, you know, walk away from your drink. If somebody buys you a drink, don't accept it unless it comes directly from the bartender. Unless you see where the fuck it came from and you have eyes on it. Don't let a dude bring you a fucking drink, especially a dude you don't know. You know what I mean? That kind of shit. There's all these fucking things out there to protect women or advice to women how to not be... You know, victim. victims, but then when they are, you know, taken advantage of, taken advantage of, or, you know, raped or whatever, then it's their fucking fault. Assaulted. I can't take it. I can't stand it. All you fuckers need to go jump off a bridge. Oh, you were drinking, right? What were you wearing? None of your business. It doesn't matter. I should be able clothes. to walk down the street, I was fucking start clothes. fucking naked, and not be sexually assaulted. I was, I was wearing clothes. Yeah. I, it doesn't even matter. Were you drinking? I, I had some water and That's someone put some shit in it. So anyway, here's that. Go ahead, because I'm I, I don't want to get on my soapbox. She's coming in hot. This man has been drugging women and sexually assaulting them since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of his career. Since the beginning of his career, and has been seemingly untouchable. What he would then do, like, what his M.O. was, once he, you know, kind of blew up, he was doing stand-up in Vegas, in Reno, in these states. And he would, like, you know, have people bring women to him. Mm. Like, oh, Bill Cosby wants to meet you. Oh, you know, he wants to, to, to mentor you. Oh, he wants to talk to you. Right. And... Hey, he's a comedian. More than likely, he he would have some real groupies who would be interested in a, a consensual yep. interaction. Right. But that's not what he wants. 
That's weird. He wants to make you take something to quote unquote loosen you up. <laughs> make you make you pass out. Um, something to calm you. Have a drink to calm you down. That's what he said. Those were the words he used. But th- th- what actually happened was your ass was out fucking cold. And then um, do what he wanted with you while you were unconscious. Blacked the fuck out. He would walk people places. They people would, you know, there were so many women, all different ages, like old, like older women, women who didn't even realize that they were assaulted. Yeah, because he gaslit the fuck out of people. Yeah, which really pissed me off. Oh my god, <sighs> that's what they do. That's what that's literally what predators do. Oh, you drank too much. Oh, you know. Oh, you don't remember you wanted to do this and you wanted to do that and blah, 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 blah. It's like, no. No, my friend. No, you sir. took my consent away and you did what you wanted with me while I was unconscious. Yeah. And that's just, it's it's so, I can't even think of the word. Not disgusting, not just, it's just. It's a crime. It is a. Far beyond that. It's a violent crime. That's what people are, don't get. It's literally a violent crime. It is violence against women. Mm-hmm. So he would just continue to do this. Like, and he was always touring. Oh, and then he has a wife, right? He he meets and marries Camille. <sighs> I he just, has a wife and what, six kids? Five children they had. Him and Camille got married in 1964. <laughs> 1964. They have five children. So everyone's like, oh, he's safe. He's married. He has a great, you know, relationship. He's 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 America's dad or he's the perfect yeah. husband. His family's on the cover of magazines. Yeah, like Ebony Magazine, Essence Magazine, all the black magazines, Jet mm-hmm. People. Because his star is, again, continuing to rise. He's doing movies, like Brandy's saying. He's doing TV shows. Fat Albert comes out in the 70s because he was super focused on education. He wanted to make sure... The kids were educated because he grew up in PA, and I'm sure it was hood as fuck. Philly is hood as fuck, right? I'm ask saying. Quinta. Ask know. Quinta, ask Will, Will slapping motherfuckers. <laughs> Philly is hood as fuck. And let's just think about it, in the 60s, in the 70s. Like, what have you learned that you are bringing? I'm just very disappointed. Thank my lucky stars that when I was acting like a crazy person in San Francisco, ripping and running, going into the bars, that, oh, I did wake up one time somewhere and I was like, what the fuck? Like, why are there people doing cocaine around me? Like, <laughs> did I tell what? you this? Did I tell you this? Oh my gosh. So we used to hang out at this bar um, in, in San Francisco in the financial district. What was it called? Fluid. Remember I had my birthday party there. Yeah. I was a regular there. Where where Jar Jeter wouldn't take a picture with you? Yes, where Jar Jeter wouldn't take a picture with you. Okay. So, one night, we were partying at the club, drinking drinks, and some dudes... <laughs> drinking drinks. <laughs> some dudes were like, hey, you guys want to go to the after party? It was me and a girlfriend. And we're like, yeah, sure. And it was, like, around the corner. And, like, they took us, like, in a limo, just around the corner to another after party or a club or a bar or something. And I sat down. I don't know if I drank something else while I was there, but I passed out. I was sitting at a table. I passed out. I woke up and I like looked to my left and I looked to my right. And my friend was there and she was conscious and she was talking to somebody else. But then like to the other side of me, there were people like doing coke. And they were like, oh, do you want some? I was like, oh, hell no. It's time to go. (laughs) And I was like... Let's go. And this is before Ubers and Lyfts, so we had to call a cab and get home. But honestly, I I do think back and, you know, realize, like, situations that I had, like, put myself in and realized, hey, you are lucky you made it out. Okay. <laughs> but Bill Cosby's a monster. Yeah, that's different. It's different. I know it's different. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, there's so many opportunities or so many chances that yeah. you can encounter. Opportunities for someone have, to have taken advantage of you. Yeah. For sure. But these people weren't even in those situations. They were, no. like, meeting a famous person, and mm-hmm. they thought that person was going to be, you know, like, Safe. a fucking gentleman, if you, if you will. Or at least not fucking sexually assault them. 
Mm-hmm. Like a random a random dude saying, hey, you guys want to go to the after party? Yeah, I know I'm, there's a risk of this guy being a pervert. But the famous guy that you fucking been watching on TV or in a movie or, you know, whatever. You don't think he's going to fucking drug you. Especially because, again, he has a family. And you know he has a family. And he presents himself as this guy who loves his family, loves his wife, you know. So mm-hmm. he's not the, the guy that you would think... And it's sad that we have to walk around suspecting everybody of being fucking sex perverts. I mean, sex criminals or sex whatever. Perverts. You know, it sucks. Tits pervert. That's <laughs> Mr. Fitzherbert. Fitzherbert. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> um, but the thing that really drove me crazy was the gaslighting. To like, oh, you you had too much to drink. You shouldn't have drank that much. Oh, well, um, you embarrassed... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that one. You embarrassed yourself. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. And then me apologizing. Apologizing to you. Or some women, like, waking up in bed and like, oh, I must have done something and thanking him. And, oh, my God. What a fucking asshole. Was this the guy who was, like, he would want people to watch him eat food? No. No, that wasn't him. Was this the guy? <laughs> I feel like I heard, I, a, I, I heard a story of him like making people sit there and watch him eat. No, I don't believe that was Bill Cosby. That was uh, somebody else. Some other asshole. Yeah. That's Weirdos. Weird. That's weird. I've never heard that story, I don't believe. But I, yeah, so it wasn't Bill Cosby. Ugh. But as he's bringing in all this work, all of these allegations, all these cases, all these women are saying. The numbers are going up too. Like, that's the thing. It's more and more. <laughs> As he's getting more famous, more women are like, uh, Go downstairs and put your shoes on. Something's not right. <laughs> um, this guy did this thing to me. And people are like, oh. you know, either they don't say anything or when they do say something, they're fucking made to feel like it was their fault or they're literally just ignored. Um, fuck you, sir. Um, it's rude. It's super rude. And I, it's not just rude. It's just gross. It's just really gross. Do you think his wife knew, though? Do you think she knew that, like, hey, Camille, play dead. Go to sleep. Here, have a have a few pills. See how you feel in the morning. Okay, and so as we find out later on, he wasn't obviously, I mean, it's not obvious. He wasn't giving women Spanish flies. He was like, oh, here, take this. Never told women what he was giving them. He was giving them quaaludes. He was telling them, like, oh, here, yeah, just take this. Yeah. Take this. Um, didn't one chick say she had a headache and he was like, here's an aspirin? Oh, I don't remember that. Don't That's remember, messed up. I remember That's like, messed I heard up. a story where he said it was an aspirin. I wouldn't be surprised because someone would be like, I don't drink. Um, I, you know. Yeah, and he would be like, here, take it anyway. Like, yeah. here, drink. The, he was doing, it was the chick that he, it was in Tahoe. And he was like, oh, you know, she was supposed to be running, um, not running lines with him, but, um. She was supposed to audition for something, yeah. and he was helping her with her audition. Like pro- he was like, "Oh, let's." Oh, he was like, "Oh, well, let's do this. Um, this this acting, scene, uh, yeah. act exercise or something like this. Right, a scene exercise or something. An exercise." And he would put them in like weird situations and like put his arms around them, and I don't know. It's fucking yeah. weird. Yeah, and dude. he get he he poured her a drink, and he was like, "Drink." She was like, "I don't drink." Right, and he got mad. Yeah. Just, like, you could see him, like, his face change and turn into a fucking monster. Okay, you know what? As soon as that face comes out, I'm out. Like, I'm out. I will kick you in your fucking wiener, and I'm out. Wiener. I will fuck you up, dude. Mm-mm. I don't care if you are Bill Cosby. Like, that... I get it. You know, there's, like, this thing about being starstruck, maybe. Yeah. And, you know, not wanting to upset Bill Cosby. I I am the kind of person where I don't I don't care. I don't care. You be mad. Go ahead and be mad. Be mad, Bill. Be mad and talk shit about me to all your friends. I don't fucking care. I'm not going to be your little fucking puppet. If you're trying to get me to drink something I don't want to drink, I'm going to hurt you. And unfortunately... Come on. You don't want to drink this? He just had drink this it. influence where, you know, people trusted him. And that's the thing. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. I just don't trust people anyway. Like, I used to be one of those people that, like, people were are good. Oh, yeah, people are essentially good. No, they're not. They're trash. Everybody's trash until you prove otherwise. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Okay, I'll be happy to say, oh, I'm glad you're not trash. But you're trash until I know that you're not trash. <laughs> so. 
Ooh, he's straight trash. And, you know, there's all these networks that are covering it up. They're like, oh, yeah, we've gotten multiple reports of him being a fucking trash bag. Eh, we really don't care. Exactly. Exactly. They were, they fucking threw the shit under the rug. They swept it under the rug. They freaking made these women feel like shit. Yep. They ignored them. They blamed them. It was all kinds of just bad shit. Mm -hmm. Shit that is the reason that women don't fucking report shit that happens to them. Right. Exactly. That, precisely. So as he, again, I'm just jumping through the years, right? So let's talk about the fucking Cosby show. So then he gets the Cosby show and, you know, he's opening up to a whole different network of people. It's like on NBC. It blows up NBC's numbers. It's on primetime TV. Primetime television. And look at, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to fuck up my cash cow. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, fuck these hoes. Who cares? Who cares if Bill Cosby, you know, does this? Let's, let's make it easier for him. Let's bring in all these models. Right. Right. Let's Weird. Let's bring in a, a freaking um, a, a stable of models and let Bill pick what he likes to fucking molest. Like, that's why all these models were like, you know, these later, like Janice Dickinson and what's the other girl's name? Um, Beverly Johnson. Beverly Johnson. It's just so wrong on so many different levels. And you're like, you're putting me on a casting or I'm supposed to be this and do this and do that, but you're setting me up to get raped. <laughs> Basically, yeah. You're sending me off like they I'm are, a prostitute. They were Jeffrey Epstein before, the, but these girls weren't underage. That was the only difference. These girls weren't underage. They he were. wasn't underage and nobody. Yeah. Good, they good, were all bully for of you. age. Bully for you. Okay, at least you are, you're not uh, a, pedophile. a pedophile as well. You're still a sex criminal, though. <laughs> You're still committing sex crimes. You are still doing that. <laughs> Rudy wasn't in any danger. <sighs> he was just making it, they they were making it easier. And as he gained power and influence and money, he was just like, send them to me. I don't need to go out and hunt okay. people. Yeah, pretty much. And then as he's producing the Cosby show, he was just a fucking monster, dude. Like, you You're know. You're a monster. <laughs> When I was watching this, I posted a meme on Twitter, and it was exactly that. <laughs> the fucking gingerbread man. <laughs> You're a monster. I mean, yes. That's the only levity you can bring to this, because it's fucked up. It's a fucked up story, and all of these women, these 80, what was there, 83 at the 83 end? who came, came forward. Came forward. Yeah. 83 women who had come forward. <sighs> mm -hmm. How many other women? Yes are out there who, first of all, don't realize that they got assaulted. Or don't want to come forward because of all of the bullshit that comes with it. Yeah. And the scrutiny yeah. and the, you know, it sucks. It it, it really fucking sucks. I'm going to, you know what? Here's my declaration. I'm going to go out and start raping dudes. <laughs> I'm going to go out and I'm going to start raping dudes. Oh, my God. And oh my God. let's see how many how many of them are going to come forward, number one, because it's probably like one out of every 25 will come forward and say that I raped them. And, oh, my God. And... I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to slip them a drug and pull their pants down and leave them somewhere. And, and make like, them think. Yeah, make exactly. Them think something happened to them. Maybe sticks a banana between their butt cheeks, but that's about it. Like, <laughs> I don't have to go as far as penetration. Or, like, like leave a peel sitting on their butt and maybe they <laughs> think there's a banana in there somewhere. <laughs> Smear a little banana mush on their butt. <laughs> like, what the... F it's so... It's fucked up because... These women are not being, you know, believed. It, it took this long. It took this long, and still people are like, no, no, no. no. You know what I mean? No. Like, what are you the fucking fuck kidding are you talking me? about? Are you kidding me? Uh, in the, oh, oh, okay. Let me just hold up. Let me rewind. The thing that was more fucked up, it's not, I mean, it's fucked up no matter what, but he was raping mostly white women. Yeah. Mostly white women. Of them were. A majority of them were white women. Um, l later on, he started getting a little more uh, diverse. Yeah. But it's like, okay. I know. There was, there was like one Asian woman who came forward. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of biracial women. Mm -hmm. um, and Beverly Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it looked even worse. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. 
you're the you're the predatory black man. Yeah. And it was like you are you are this. Yeah. And you know, you've been wearing this fucking mask of, course. of I'm high and mighty because as he again is coming up in his career and as he's getting older. He's getting older. They're giving him all these fucking awards Honors. and and a freaking an honorary degree, an degrees, honorary uh, doctorate. You're not a doctor. doctor. You're not a doctor. I was going to say Dr. Huxtable. He becomes <laughs> Dr. Cosby. You're not a doctor. And then like, you know, he then starts talking down to like the low class. He black starts community. talking down to to black people, period. Yeah. I'm all the low class. He becomes mm-hmm. Uncle Ruckus. He becomes Uncle Ruckus, but that happened after his son got killed. No, here's what I like, feel like he just got really angry. After angry at black folks, though. Like we didn't do it. There was a Russian dude that killed your son. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Don't be talking to me like you're crazy. Oh yeah, we know we black people are. What was it? Um, un. What was what was the term? Underprivileged. Or, un- yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, it's because I'm underprivileged. I remember my psychology professor showed us a video of him speaking oh, and talking about, you know, black people have this mentality of being underprivileged or some something to that effect. And I was just like, what the fuck is he talking about? Because, oh, <sighs> because you're told you're underprivileged. That's why you can't achieve anything. And I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, are you fucking kidding me? That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever fucking heard from come out of another black person's mouth. Okay, who came from fucking Philly? Who came from nothing? Like it's not like his parents were fucking millionaires. It's not like they were fucking you know. Uh, it's because I'm rich. Yeah, it's just it was. It's fucked up the way people look down on their own people. Yes, when you're a self hating black man. Um. It's because I'm rich. It's because I'm rich. That's what he kept saying. It's because I'm rich. And um, <laughs> it's because you're an asshole. You're an asshole who is a predator. Like when he had, when he was talking down to like, like you said at that, that college thing, one of the teachers was like, hey, dude, like the fuck? Like, what are you even talking about? And published something. And then he came after the dude. He yeah. came after him. He tried to come after my job. Yeah. Because you don't like what I said. Like, uh-huh. You can eat my ass. Like... <laughs> I will say what I want. That's what the fucking First Amendment is about. Now, I didn't say anything illegal. I didn't say anything violent. I didn't threaten your fucking life. You just didn't like my message because you think you're better than people. Right. That's the problem. You're going to try to come after my fucking job. Mm-hmm. You're not even a doctor. So he's lying about stuff. He's just like, that's why he's here on this podcast. because He's a fucking liar. And, um... You're not even a doctor. You're a dude who happened to get a lucky break being a stand-up comedian that white people liked. That's pretty much it. He is a successful predator. Like, seriously, let's not, let's not pretend that you fucking changed the world. You didn't fucking invent anything. You didn't fucking go to the moon. Um, you didn't save a fucking country. I'm you didn't Albert. do anything. What are you talking about? I'm teaching all these kids. Everybody's literate because of me. What are you even talking about, Brandon? Motherfucker, you're not reading Rainbow. You're not Sesame Street. You're a dude who was telling jokes. Butterfly in the sky, okay? I LeVar could, Burton, where are you at? I could fly twice as high. Because take a look, it's in a book. Can, reading Rainbow, Okay, son. seriously. Can we get LeVar Burton a doctorate, please? <laughs> He's awesome. Again, they're making it easy for him. They are, by they... I mean, Hollywood. The Hollywood machine. I mean, producers. I mean, networks. I mean, they are just bringing him in for him and covering it up. Because people are complaining. He's a producer. He's producing the motherfucking Cosby show. And he is harassing the talent. And they are just paying people off. He Settlements. Settlements after settlements after settlements. Until Gloria Allred. Which ended in a settlement. Yeah. But I think when she had, like, three women who came forward about, you know, him fucking raping them, asshole, that just makes me mad. That just makes me so fuck. It's such a violation. It is. It's disgusting. And it's not even, it's not even just that it's a violation. It's the fact that you are this person who pretends to be, like, it would be different if you were a fucking dirty rapist that was on the street. Yeah. To me. Like, right. yeah. If, if you pretend it as that. We expect that from you. Right. But that's, it's not, we don't expect it from Wolf and this clothing. person. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, you used your influence and your reputation 
to be this guy, this dirty fucker. You should have just literally just dressed like an asshole rapist with a fucking disgusting skull or cross earring in your fucking, and a, a bandana and greasy hair on the fucking street, out on the corner, following chicks home. That's what you could have done. Or at least cat call us. Cat call us and let us know that you're a creep. Hey, girl, what well, you doing? No, because hey, everybody hey. that cat calls isn't a rapist. Well, I'm my, my antennas are up. Yo antennas yeah. should have been up. <laughs> Where was your antennas? It was your antennas. Yeah, that's true. Like you're more alert when it when it's that guy. Yeah. But when it's fucking Bill Cosby, you think you're gonna be fucking like, oh, I'm gonna help you with your career. Someone's gonna make me laugh. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, you're gonna be, you know, a nice guy that might help me, you know, learn something with my career or talk to somebody for me or whatever. And the thing is, like, he didn't even help these women. Like, it would be different if you were doing this and then you actually helped their careers get off the ground or whatever. That's not even what you fucking did. Like, at least fucking Harvey Weinstein, the disgusting pig that he is. Did he die? Made women famous. Did he die? No. Oh. I wish. Somebody died. It wasn't him. Somebody died. I'm just saying, you know, Harvey Weinstein is a disgusting fucking grease spot, but he wasn't, I mean, he did try to take women's careers away, though. Mm -hmm. But at least he didn't lie and say, well, because he told them, well, your career's going to be over. At least he didn't drug them. Yeah, and that's, yes. He at least he did them. not drug them. Like, and at least I have the chance to at least try and fight you off yeah. rather than be catatonic. And be like, right. why am I butt ass naked in this man's bed? Yeah. Or why like, am I waking up and this nigga's looking at me like the <laughs> <so> fuck? <laughs> Stop. Yeah. I mean, it's comparing fucking pond scum to algae to bathrooms mold. You know what I mean? To black yeah. mold. They're okay. both they're both awful things. They're yep. both disgusting. But fuck, man. Like, at least I have the chance, and at least I know you trying to put something up in me. And the thing is, his castmates I know. didn't even notice. Like, they didn't know what was going on. Like, the guy that played um, Vanessa's husband. Mm -hmm. The one that lived in the, the Not Vanessa. Um, uh, I know who you're talking about. The oldest sister's... Um, no. It was... Uh, what's her name's husband? Um, Lisa Bonet, Lisa the Bonet guy that played... His name was, he was Martin. Denise's husband, yeah. Martin. The guy that played Martin, he was like, is that what was going on? Because, like, at first, he said... At first, when he started hearing the allegations, he didn't believe it. But then he asked a, a person that was on the show... Uh -huh. And she got all upset, uh -huh. and he was like, then I knew it was true. And that's that's crazy to me. Like, I get that, okay, I don't believe that's what's going on until somebody tells me, you know, until I I physically see, I see a physical reaction from somebody. Right. But if you're another person who's working with this person, who's been, you know, you've you worked for this, with this person for, you know, 30 years or whatever, and you mm -hmm. guys have been good friends, and you... You don't know that side of them. It's weird, like you know how like people are like, well, I had no idea that he was, he was such and such. Okay, that's fine. You didn't know, but don't act like it's impossible because it isn't. Nothing's impossible. Mm -hmm. I didn't. You don't know that if I buried somebody in my backyard or not, and fucking encase them in cement. You like, don't know. You have no idea. I might be the fucking the queen of the goddamn PTA and the fucking you know having. Uh, block parties every weekend, inviting you to my house to look at my my right. new stop, TV. Stop telling people about my life. But I might have bodies in my backyard. Shh. You know what I mean? Or in my basement. Yeah. Or in my pond. <laughs> have you heard about these bodies turning up at Lake Mead? Oh yeah, because of the. Uh, well, I heard about the one. Was there more? Yeah. Oh, I heard about the one that was in the um the tin the, the barrel. steel barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So it's drying up. Yeah. And bodies are popping up. Yep. <laughs> yep. And they think more. Missing persons cases. From like the 70s. Yeah, and the 80s. Um, well, that could happen at Lake Pyramid, too. It could happen at any lake. Where y'all got the, the cement shoes? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Awful. Dude. Okay. Bill, fuck you. Anyway, um, <sighs> he's, he's a monster. <laughs> Lots of... Watch the documentary, though. Like... Honestly, so many women, so many stories, so similar. And he, he just wanted to get his jollies off the way he liked to. And was just drugging women. So, Gloria Allred, that's where I left it. So, she defended some women. and um, She represented She them. represented <laughs> some women. And so, in the settlement, he had to go, he had to, what's it called? What's it called when you tell everybody the business? Confess. 
confess. He had to confess. <laughs> he confessed what he was doing with the Quaaludes and why and not why. No, not why. Why? But, Here's why. Because I'm a fucking freak. Because I, yeah. Because, oh, well, if she can't say no, you know, she can't resist You don't even me. take, take their, that's the thing. You don't even get the, give them the opportunity to say no. You just assume they're going to say no. And drug them. And drug them. Because that, you take sick. away their autonomy. It's sick. It's so it's sick. taking away their autonomy and... Being a fucking, like, literally, you could be a necrophiliac if that's what you want. Like, go find yourself a body somewhere. I'm sure, go to Lake Mead. <laughs> um, so he confesses to what exactly he was doing and in a deposition. You can pay somebody to do that for you. You can pay, some, that, exactly. There are willing participants out there, but you don't like that. You just want to be a fucking nasty bastard and just be a monster. I wonder I wonder if he actually did drug Camille like at any point in time, and and uh, you know, she was just like, oh, okay, whatever, you know, <laughs> like you know, it's weird, right? Mm-hmm. I agree entirely. So he confesses to what he had been doing, but then like you know that record was sealed. But as he is on his high horse and is saying he's better than all these people, right? Oh yeah, back then we used to speak English. Fuck off dickhead you just because you don't want to get with the times vernacular changes over the years it has it always has we don't say you know flim flam and and shamalama ding dong <laughs> and you know jiggly up your nose with a rubber hose anymore those aren't the words we use anymore we use new words Fuck get over boy. okay <laughs> um so a judge was like, I think I should release this information because you fake as fuck and people need to know. And you are literally a fucking public health fucking hazard. Mm-hmm. You are a goddamn, what is, it, what is the term? Uh, a menace to fucking society. You're a danger. <laughs> You're a danger to society. They need to fucking scarlet red letter these motherfuckers out there. Just like. R. They need to get this the R for right rapist. on their fucking forehead, like on um Inglorious Bastards, where yes. they carved the fucking swastika into their forehead. Yep, that's exactly what they need to do to these uh, big ass fucking red ass R. Mm-hmm. R for tattoo rapist. that shit right on their fucking forehead. Something. So all this other stuff comes to light, and then all these other women are like, "Okay, it's our time to fucking shine and let everybody know what's been going on." Dick. So angry. So how 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 long was he in jail for? Not even uh, that long. No, not like maybe a year. Because he was fighting it for a while. So in 2018, Cosby was convicted of aggravated indecent assault. Um, he was imprisoned until aggravated indecent assault. Yeah, rape. Yeah, he oh. is the word it is. So he actually got out in June of 2021. He got out last year. Okay. In November of 2021, the prosecution petitioned the U.S. Supreme Court asking to reverse the decision. But March 7th, they're like, no, you're still a fucking rapist, so we're not going to change our mind. But he got out last June, 2021. So he didn't even do that long. Maybe like two-ish years. For being I thought out. it was less, so. They're, yeah, and they're like, well, he's 80. Oh. He's, uh, you know what the funny thing is? I'm sure he's got Alzheimer's and he probably forgot the fucking shit he did. No. No? No, so? not at all. Mm. Murderers don't forget their murderers and rapists don't forget their rapists. <sighs> Dexter. Mm-hmm. Did you see that episode of Dexter where the... The, the, the huh? The old Dexter or new Dexter? The old Dexter. Okay. There was an episode of Dexter where there was a man who had been a serial killer. Mm-hmm. And he decides that he's going to go back to being a serial killer. I mean, not decides. I guess maybe the urge caught up with him. He was an old man mm-hmm. that lived in, like, a home. And he tried to... He killed a chick, and he tried to remove her tooth, but he couldn't get the tooth out. So he left it. But Dexter caught, you know, figured out who he was. Mm-hmm. And the guy was in a... He was in an a, a old age home, and he couldn't... He didn't get the satisfaction that he, you know, would get because he was too old. His hands didn't work right. So he couldn't get the tooth out. So he didn't satisfy that that urge, that serial killer urge that he had. And Dexter killed him. But rapists are rapists. And regardless of how old they are, they're going to be rapists until they they die. Pretty much. Or they're, you know, in a catatonic state and they can't get out 
to rape people. <laughs> Rapist gonna rape. Rape. Rapist gonna rape. I I just watched this and just pretty much like watched his whole his career and his whole career was intertwined with fucking drugging and raping women. Mm-hmm. And, and the more famous he got, the more women he did. Yeah. 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 That's, it's disgusting. I feel like it's that, it's a, it's just like a serial killer. They just do shit because they, they have an urge. I don't even think he, like he didn't need to, to go out again. He, there were plenty of women who would have just threw their underwear at him. Yeah. Instead, he went out and got unwilling participants. That's fucked up. Or tricked them. Or tricked them. Deceived them. Or he would, like, try and, like, with people on the show, he would um, ingratiate himself with their family, inviting them on mm-hmm. to be his fucking friend and shit. Mm-hmm. That's... Ugh, that's creepy uncle shit. <laughs> I'm, it's just so Creepy different. uncle shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I would never do that. What is she even talking about? Like, you. She's talking about you. Why would I make this up? Oh, God, that reminds me of Michael Jackson. <sighs> Monsters! Monsters. Watch it. It's a really good documentary. Um, you learn a lot. It sucks. I just, what fucking flabbergasts me is all the people that stood outside the fucking prison holding up signs to get him out of jail. Even people our age, young people. And I'm not saying we're young, There's people but who still younger stand for people. R. Kelly. There's people who still stand oh for God. R. Kelly. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. People are so fucking stupid. You guys are dumb. You don't even know these people. Were you there? But you want to hold up a sign. What you what you want? Some jello? <laughs> what? Stop it. Jello pudding pops. It's just ridiculous. Um with your fucking Cosby sweaters. You know, ugh, ugh, yeah. I always think of like, you know, these people, it's weird. Like if that was your child yep. that said these things that that, you know, that this happened to, would you still feel the same way? Or your sister? Or your mother? Like, you know, if that was a loved one of yours, and the, fu- the fucked up thing is that there's a lot of people in this world that would, like, tell their kids and their mothers and their sisters, oh, forget about it, or, oh, are you sure, are you sure you didn't do something that That's made That's what happened think- to the woman, the, the, the pregnant one with the big afro. Her husband was like, don't say nothing, but her son was like, mom, yeah, you need to go ahead and tell them. Yeah. It's weird. But, I mean, you know, it's, those are the same people, though, that, like, they like to keep their dirty secrets in their families. Like, they refuse to call the police on their husband who's molesting their daughter. Those are the same people, the type of people that do that. It's like, yeah, you know what's happening, and you refuse to fucking acknowledge it, and you refuse to address it, and you refuse to correct it. Shame you on you. You just let it keep happening because Shame on you. you don't want people to know about it. It's fucking Shame weird. Shame on you. Um... Well, Bill Cosby's out. He's a free blind man. He's free to continue being a a creep. Um, What is he, 87? Let's see how old his grandpa is. Oh, maybe he's going to be 88 this year. He was born in June, right? July. Leo. 1937? Um, So he's going to be 85. Apparently he's legally blind now. Whoop-de-fucking-do. I don't know. He's America's dad. No, he's not. So what was the barbecue sauce? What happened on the barbecue sauce episode? The episode on the barbecue... Okay, so there was an episode where they're having a barbecue. And Elvin and Sandra are fighting. And bar- he's barbecuing. Um, you know, Dr. Huxtable is barbecuing. And so at the end, you know, they're all eating. And, like, Sandra and Elvin are, like, you know, being all, like, touchy-feely and shit. And he was like, hey, you haven't noticed that when people eat my barbecue sauce, they start getting all lovey? Oh, and shit. They look around and, you know, Sandra and Elvin are being all touchy-feely. And I don't know if if this, um, in this episode, Denise, no, Denise and Martin aren't in this episode. But um, he was like, you know, because he put something in it. And so him and, and Claire run in the house and Bud's like, this is some pretty good barbecue, Dr. Huxley. And he takes the rib out of, 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 of Bud's hand. He's like, no. <laughs> oh my god no yeah. jerk he's like none for you <laughs> oh my goodness i did not see that episode and i don't remember that episode but that's scandalous yeah they and he was a gynecologist the, the he's a gynecologist like come on with an office in his house sick bastard sick you sick you sick 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 bastard 
He's out. Apparently, he did his time. You can't trust anybody. No. You can trust nobody. You can trust us. Join us on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> but anybody else, fuck them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Brandy, you been watching anything new this week? No. I haven't watched anything new. Oh. Well, I tried to watch um, Candy. Oh, yeah, yeah, watch yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jessica Biel's hair. That's yeah. 70s hair. And 70s clothes. Oh my god! So you know, in the um the show, they show the houses. So I was like, that t- that looks like totally looks like a seventies house. Like they had walls that were like, like not partitions, but like a wall. It would be like a half wall <laughs> instead of a whole wall that would you know be just weird. I was like, wow! Like they really had some serious weird design design like architecture <laughs> aesthetic in the fucking seventies. They were bringing it, apparently, in their stage d- decor. It was just, you know, like, wow, that is a 70s house. A lot of, you know, browns and oranges. Like, brown and orange was the, the carpet color and the wall color and the furniture color. Yeah, sure. or green. Uh, and browns, browns and oranges, and and some yellows. Come on, green, brown, brown, brown. Yeah, it was just, you know, really brown. Okay. Everything was, like, really brown. I know what you're saying, like, the brown shag carpet. Yeah, and then, like, the the orange and brown sofas. Yes. And the wallpaper. I'm getting uh, WandaVision vibes. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Because it was, like, the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. As they, you know, progressed into the series. Yeah. Oh, God. <sighs> that makes me so angry. Glad we talked about it. I have to talk about it again. <laughs> Ever again. Ever again. Maybe we should do, uh, you know, leaving Neverland. Because that w- that's a whole trick right there. Oof. Oh, God. I haven't watched that one yet. Like, they even talk about the deception. Damn. No, I haven't watched it. Yeah, it's super disturbing. Okay. You're just like, God damn. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like what? This used to be my childhood <laughs> or playground, I guess. Mm-mm. No, no, it's have you seen my childhood? Nope. Weird monsters. Fucking the real monsters live among us. That's true. The real monsters live among us. Um, I've been watching Hulu a lot. I was watching Weedikit. Um, okay. On, I guess it's a Vice show. Mm-hmm. All the weed shows are on Vice. Yeah. And um, there's three seasons. I didn't watch all the episodes because I was kind of bored with some of them. Yeah, but, it's boring. I don't watch it. But one episode I watched is chick who's 19, smoked some weed, had a psychotic break, and like murdered like someone who like lived down the street, like a 75 year old pastor, killed him. Why? She said the voices told her to do it. She had a psychotic break. And then, like, for, like, three days, she was crazy. And then she's fine. She was high for three days? Or she was just crazy for three days? She was just crazy for three days. And, um... Is she blaming the weed? Or is... Did did us like... Did she have an actual fucking, like, whole mental evaluation? uh, Well, like, there's... Everyone that was, like, looking at her case, they were, like, you know, based on this, they never did her blood work, so they don't know if the drugs were, like, laced with anything because she was crazy. But they they think she had a a, a psychotic break that was brought on by cannabis, and now she's doing 30 to life. They sentenced her, and, like, she seems like a very sweet girl. Everyone's, like, you know, she's so nice, and this is so unlike her. (coughs) She admits to smoking. You know, um, it wasn't the first time she smoked weed. It though. wasn't the smoke the first time. She said okay. she smoked a lot of weed in high school and then took a break. And then, like, when she was 19 in college, she smoked and then she had a break. When she was in college. Okay. Yep. And she was just wandering down. She, she said, like, dogs were, like, talking to her, guiding her to this, this man's house who she killed. She bludgeoned him to death and was, like, trying to get into other people's houses. Her fingers were all cut up and she was just. Like, they have her on, like, video being, like, straight crazy. But then when they interview her, like, today or whenever this was done a few years ago, she's just, like, totally different. Like, they were, like, she was possessed or something. Like, a different pastor, like, he said he saw her a few days before. And he was, like, there was a dark cloud around her. 
to begin with before the weed. <laughs> yeah, like something was coming and she in West Virginia murdered West this Virginia, man. Wisconsin. It's fucked up. I told this story on my board meeting last night to some of these pothead kids. It's just like, hey, dude, like, don't smoke. Like, if you're going to, I don't say, I didn't say this, but it's like, if you're going to smoke weed, just don't do it in high school. Like, do it after high school. Because they say the more you, like, smoke when you're younger, the younger you are and the more exposure you have, the more likely the chances are that you might have. It changes your brain chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's fucked up, though. It's fucked up. But uh, anyway, Brandy, you have a thumbs up for the week? Thumbs up for the week. Um, Let's see. Anything I'm looking forward to? What's today? Thursday? Today is Thursday. Um, I cannot say I have a thumbs up for the week. Nope. Can't think of one. Do you have a thumbs up for the week? Got any events? Oh, well, you have that one. That on one Monday. on Monday yeah. at Roseman Health and Fitness. Woo woo. Um... Oh, we have Garden Club on Saturday. Are you coming? Where's it? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe at the park. Or maybe at someone's house. Mom said she was willing to host it at her house if a bunch of people don't come. If a bunch of people don't come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm chilling, dude. I'm just trying to get through the summer. Summer Brent's, hasn't even started Brent yet. starts school in the fall. I'm just trying to get through the summer. I I said I you know I want to do at least four beach trips this summer. Okay, let's make that shit happen. Um, I mean I'm just hanging on. Yeah, hanging on for dear life. Yeah. Um, we need to do our Patreon episode. Yeah. So maybe we'll do that in a few days and get that up. Yeah. But other than that, hey guys. Um. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. If you aren't already, go ahead and subscribe, follow, come back, like it, love it, share it. Like it. Like it. Um, we appreciate you for being here. If this is your first episode, welcome um, to all of our listeners that keep coming back. We appreciate you and thank you so much. And I'm Sunny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Fleeks. And this was... Book of Lies. The podcast. It's Bolt Bitches.